started Make Life Fun podcast because I needed more fun in my life. When I became a mother, I, for some reason, just put on this like high ponytail, mom jeans, and nose to the ground. I wasn't having fun. It wasn't until I started having fun that it started becoming easy. Fun and mental health go hand in hand for me. I've been in this mental health game my whole life. <laughs> and I am so lit up to like help other people. I'm so lit up for other people to experience this because it's what my wish and my mission is for every woman is to find safety within themselves because it took me a long time to get here. Welcome to the Make Life Fun podcast. Our guest today is Anit Fortenard. Anit is a wife and mom who had her second baby in the midst of the pandemic and almost lost her life. She is here to tell us about her experience and also about creating a full-time job from her social media platform. And I am so stoked for you to hear this conversation. Welcome. Welcome to the Make Life Fun podcast. Anit, thank you so much for being here. For having me. <laughs> yes, it's my pleasure. I would love to hear a little bit about you. What is bringing you joy in this moment? Yeah, so I am a mother of two, two beautiful boys, crazy, married for almost seven years, we seven years this year, and just kind of, you know, being raised here in Idaho, just still kind of like even finding out and figuring out who the heck I am and like what my purpose is in this life. But I've been finding a lot of purpose in, you know, motherhood and being a wife and everything, but also just kind of like finding what my own lane and what my passions are, because I feel like I lost a lot of that, especially in these last couple of years. Mm. I'm becoming a mother and I don't enjoy, but I'm learning to enjoy cooking. <laughs> My husband is the main chef, but I love doing those kind of things with him. Social media has become my full-time job as of last year, 2021. But before that, I really enjoyed you know, doing that just for fun. And literally, I just love dressing my kids up and dressing myself up. And the matchy matchy thing is always fun. But really, I just love to inspire others even through just fashion and getting dressed up and like boy moms, you know, doing the matchy thing was not always something that, you know, we kind of get left out on that. So I was like, you know what? No, we can still do it. And like, oh. make it yeah, I want to be a part of this. So yeah, so I think that's kind of where my page started as far as Instagram goes. I just was like, I want to do matchy matchy too. Like, it's funny when I was pregnant with Zeke, I swore I was having a girl like I had dreams, all the pink things were like, <laughs> and then God was like, Nope, you're having a boy. I feel like that's where my page started because I was like trying to I found creative ways to like make it, you know, still like a boy mom thing, but like, I still match with them too. <laughs> I loved watching the whole journey, like from the beginning yeah. all the way to now. I love the matching. I love the whole family vibe. Like I love what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it really was like just for fun, which I think a lot of people are trying to get into social media now as, as a business. When they start off with the goal of like just monetizing and making money, mm -hmm. it's not as easy and it's probably not as authentic because it really just started as a, a passion. Like I was saying there's for fun. And then, you know, we grew an audience that like and love dust for us yeah it's pretty that's so good that's so good because you're speaking the language it's like my whole thing for the last couple of years has been you get to be you I get to be me like and we're not like that's not what society tells us like we're yeah. supposed to fit in this perfect little box and especially as women like a humble little box right yeah they love humbling us <laughs> So I love that you're saying that you got on there, you were just having fun and you were authentic to yourself and you grew an audience because they loved you guys for who you were and, and who yep. you are. Yeah. It's been really cool for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I would love for you to talk a little bit about that, being a mom in business and working from home. Yeah. Like I know that can't be easy because I, yeah, it's a... <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely been a journey these last couple of months, I would say, because I quit in June of 2021, then yeah, it became full time. And then Q4, which is the last three months of the year, like kind of kicked my ass, like not even gonna lie, <laughs> like because we had the holidays and everything included. So I'm really still in the very beginning of it. 
But what I've learned so far is just time management and also picking your battles and working not only from home, but the children are a part of a lot of our brand deals. If they're not going to want to take pictures, you're not going to get it. And you're going <laughs> to, and that you're going to have to try again and like not make forced things. And also because, you know, they're children. So for them, you know, we make it like it's going to be fun, even though it's work, you know, we're going to be fun and take pictures, for example. But if they're not in the mood, forget it. Like, <laughs> You're not going to get it and you have to just, you know, be willing to pick your battles. And so I think so far the journey has taught me a lot just to go with the flow and that life is going to happen to you. But considering this is my career now, if you will, I'm just going to have to do the best that I can. And so I've been trying to be graceful with myself and not just, and also like there's no blueprint, right? It's very, you know, there, there'll be a brand that reaches out and offers this amount. And then this one, and I'm like, you know, is this a lot? Is this not? So there's so much learning involved mm-hmm. where I'm, you know, I don't want to be taken advantage of, but also I have a lot of imposter syndrome. So then I'm like, am I worth, you know, being paid that much and stuff so I feel like there's been I've like just the last six months have learned like so much about myself and just understanding that like no there is value there because if there wasn't they wouldn't be reaching out you know what I mean and so I feel like I go on side tangents so just no I love your side tangents because you're giving me goosebumps right now because you're saying like I created this thing that was just supposed to be fun and now I got blessed because I was having fun and being myself And now people are reaching out and asking, like, will you work with me? And you're like, is this too much? Is this too little? And you're like this imposter syndrome, but you are worth it all. And you created a space where people look forward to seeing you. Like, I just wanted to speak that life to you. Like, you are amazing. Like, you are doing work that is beautiful. Like, seeing especially your kids being of different race. Like, I can't remember, is it what your husband? He's a Armenian. Okay, I was right, yeah. (laughs) Armenian, and then you're Haitian. And so with that, you don't see that every day, right? And so having that representation, I think is so important. And it's so important to see moms that are loving on their kids and having the family be like the main focus and making it fun in the process. And that's what this whole show has been about is like finding that fun in motherhood. Oh, yes, yes. And it, and it's hard sometimes, <laughs> like not even gonna lie. And I think that's why, you know, people enjoy it. and it's inspiring just to feel like people like to not only just like look at pretty pictures, but you know, I try to tell our story, you know, mm-hmm. via caption stories, etc. I was just like, you know, going through it and not always having the perfect picture, but hey, it's okay. And it is inspiring to see, you know, the mom like dressed up matching with her boys or whatever and like looking like like she has it all together because then you might wake up and be like a little motivated like you know what I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try I'm gonna try a little harder yeah <laughs> there's definitely like pros and cons I I definitely feel like to social media in general but I do feel like the inspiring aspect and that's why you know I'm very conscious of even who I follow and just feeling like someone who's gonna inspire me and tell tell me their story and get inspiration from so yeah it's definitely been a journey though like I said and I feel like I'm just learning every day like my husband helps a lot with contracts and like you know the kind of like the legal jargon and like what the brand can repurpose and what they can own rights to and length of time like there's a lot that goes into it which I think I wasn't ready for I was like you know I'll take a picture and I'll post you pay me (laughs) Mm -hmm. yes like little extra things that I'm just like really learning and Mm -hmm. seeing why you know there's mothers that are making 600 700 a million dollars doing this full-time influencers and so it's it's crazy you know that's the goal (laughs) goal yes right now there's just a lot of learning and just believing in myself Mm. and what service it is that I provide because like Mm. I said I just started just doing it for fun and it kind of turned into something that I yeah was not ready for but you were so ready you were calling it in because (laughs) you were like having fun and I that's like been my thing for myself is like the more fun I have the more my people show up the more fun I have the more like the more ease shows up and so you could definitely tell by like your stories (laughs) and your fee that you are having fun so I love that you're speaking to the struggle because every I mean life has its like flows. It's like a roller coaster, right? (laughs) It's like you go high, high, and then sometimes you come really far down and then it's like right back up. And so I love that you're speaking to the the contrast of both of them. I just love that you were speaking on the fact that you started having fun and then the contract. So tell us a little bit about like, what's that part been like for you? Like trying to like deal with that part that you didn't know, because there wasn't somebody that was like, this is how you do it. 
take this step, take this step. Like you're creating it, like you're envisioning it and making it happen, which is so magical. <laughs> yes, I'm so thankful. And I'm giving my husband a little shout out right now, but he's like so helpful and just so like amazing with like to him, like he sees me obviously different than I feel myself, but he's very much like you are like, I don't know, every day, like I'll go through, you know, some imposter syndrome or I'll you know, comparison and being like, I don't know, and self-doubt. And then he's just like, you are the talent. Like people Mm. are not following you just because like they follow you for a reason. They get some value from you and you need to remember that. Like he has to tell me that. I love it. You're You're like your cheerleader. And I, oh, we all need that really do and he oh my gosh so when it comes to these negotiation processes and stuff he really can take the emotional part out of it and be like no like this is a business you were a talent and like so it's it's been so like amazing having him to do that part because I get emotional about it where I'm like oh like am I asking too much like they're gonna think I'm crazy like and he's like no like and he has he's gotten deals like people to and it's crazy to think that like someone will come in lowballing but he knows where he's like he'll put in another offer and like I'm like it's like a thousand dollars over you know what they've offered and then they'll accept it or they'll mm-hmm. come or something like that where it's right. like oh like you guys were really playing with me. <laughs> like, Yay. You have like a security guard. That's what I'm going to call him. He's like your love man security guard. (laughs) And he's like, no, like if anything, you know, we can, we can negotiate, but you're not going to, you know, sell yourself short with learning that process. And I've, and I've learned some other stuff. I've joined a couple of groups and stuff where, you know, other moms do this. So we can kind of like compare and like, Hey, so like, what do you, (laughs) you know, what do you think about this? And then also, you know, I just straight up Google sometimes I'm like, okay, somebody wants to own the rights to this image for a year. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because it's a lot of just, you know, researching. But I think that, you know, this industry has grown a lot, even in the last, you know, just couple years and 2020, I think it really took off. It's just because there's so many eyeballs on our phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So advertisers are like, yep, that's where we're going with the money. And so I'm just like trying to take a piece of that pie, you know, just a little bit. Yes, you deserve it more than, (laughs) you more than deserve it, more than worthy. I am like clapping for you and I am here for all of it. (laughs) So please don't stop. Keep going. <laughs> my social media is kind of like an album you know and I feel like had I not kind of curated this platform I wouldn't be so intentional be like we need to take a picture or we need to you know mm-hmm. get some cute pictures and stuff or whatever and now I kind of am forced to as weird as that sounds just because as a content creator you have to create mm-hmm. content but I look back and even just a couple months ago I'm like scrolling through my own feed and I'm like oh my gosh I got these are so <laughs> No, I just am so in love with it and the images and like it's a great memory book mm-hmm. and nothing else too. So I think the term influencer still makes me cringe a little bit and like the thought of like, you know, they get they get kind of a bad rep, but I think there is a lot of value um in that space because like I said, companies would not be putting so much money into it if there wasn't. So yeah. it's all right. <laughs> Right. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing a little piece of that ride with us here on the Make Life Fun podcast. So working with your husband, has that always come pretty easy? Because it sounds like you guys have kind of a balance going on. Yeah, you know, I feel like, you know, we've been together for 12 years and I can't, I could probably count on like one hand how many like serious fights we've had. One of those things where you're like, is this too good to be true? And then we have really good communication styles where we've learned how to communicate very well. I used to be one that like would just shut down and like not communicate at all. And he, but he's like opposite where he's like, he's going to pry it out of me and be like, no, we're, we're going to figure this out. <laughs> And I'm like, so I've learned to open up a lot more instead of just shutting down and just like communicating really well. But I want to say that we've kind of just always meshed really well, which is a huge blessing. I mean, I'm not saying we're perfect, Mm -hmm. but and have definitely like, you know, have our little our little issues or whatever. But for the most part, it's just so it comes so natural and easy. And then he's kind of the yin to my yang. So where I'm weak, he's strong and vice versa. And so luckily, it's working out really well. We're able to do it together. Together, but yeah, I'm very blessed. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. I would love for you to speak a little bit on how did you guys learn to become kind of communicators with each other? Because you were saying how you tend to shut down. That was me. I shut down at the beginning of my marriage and relationship as well. My husband and I have been together 11 years now, so pretty close. I remember him saying, oh, I'm the luckiest man alive. Like, I don't have to deal with anything. She just gets really quiet. So when he said that, I was just like, well, this voice better learn. 
talk. <laughs> yes. Time has spoken a lot to that, just kind of like becoming more comfortable with each other and just knowing that like he is 100% there for me, like probably more than I am for myself, to be honest, because I self-sabotage a lot, that trust and everything that has developed over the time. But I think the biggest is just realizing that, you know, he's my person Mm -hmm. and, you know, there's no point in trying to hide anything because he usually (laughs) tries to get it out of me. He's just, you know, that person. But yeah, I think just realizing that and that, you know, we made this commitment together, you know, for better or for worse. So like whatever I bring to the table, like we're going to hash it out, we're going to figure it out and vice versa. So I think, I think that was a huge part of it. Just kind of accepting that. Making that commitment, like right off the bat, it sounds like you made a commitment that no matter what you guys were determined to work through it and know that no matter what you've got each other's backs and you're each other's person. And I think that's, oh, that's so beautiful because I think a lot of times for us women, we sometimes forget that our husband has our backs. Like yeah. they don't mean harm. Like sometimes they do things, say things that feel in the moment, like, Ooh, that yeah. kind of hurts. And I think remembering that in the back of your mind, that that person is your person and they have your back and giving them almost like the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. So it, that helps a lot. <laughs> it's just yeah. A pr- so, yeah. So tell us a little bit more about your boys. I know you have two boys. Zeke, he, whew, four years old is hard. He was saying something about like, well, I'm ugly. And I, I don't even know what the conversation was. And I was like, no, like you're not ugly at all. Like you're the most handsome boy ever. Just hyping him up. And I was like, in fact, I wouldn't have half of my followers. Of whatever. <laughs> it's you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Justin Bieber did not just post you on his page for no reason. <laughs> like, kind of going off of that, but it's been fun. They are, so we got pregnant with Ezra when Zeke, probably like a week after his second birthday. So they're pretty close, obviously close in age. And it's just such a weird dynamic right now because Ezra wants to do everything Zeke does. Mm-hmm. And Zeke is starting to learn that independence and he's like, not here for it. <laughs> But no, so Zeke is in preschool two days a week. He's four years old. So much fun, but so smart. Um, The other day he came home and told me he had three girlfriends. So there's Lord help me help me <laughs> because he is so cute and I know like people comment all the time they're like he's gonna you know the girls are gonna be knocking I'm like they already are what's going on <laughs> so he's brilliant like honestly every day like he sh- it shocks me you know the way his language and how he is able to use words and you know articulate things that I'm like there's no way I was doing that at four years old mm-hmm. he really is so smart and the sweetest boy but Ezra came in the picture and every time like they're lethal together I don't know what it is like he'll be so sweet by himself but once Ezra's in the room like he just brings out this little evil in Zeke and Ezra himself is such a personality I can't with this kid but he wakes up and he he chooses violence he does and he he really just he just I don't know what it is it's that second child syndrome he's like I gotta fight to make my my spot known and keep up with big brother but like he he really is like a sweetheart too but together the combo my husband and I, we we both choose a kid and we have to we have to both like play uh defense and it's a lot of fun, but they are they are hard work and I think it's funny because people are like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have any more. And at this stage, when I think about the dynamics now that we're dealing with, I'm like, hell no. <laughs> you know, I always say never say never, but oh my gosh, they're so sweet and they're so photogenic. Obviously, I keep taking pictures and videos of them, I can't help it. But you know, just like anybody else, they're regular kids and they throw their fits and tantrums and <sighs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's been seriously it's such a blessing. Like, I'm just so lucky that I was chosen mm-hmm. to be their mom because the best duo and they really do, I feel like are going to be like best friends. I truly see just how much love they have for each other and how much like admiration Ezra has looking at his big brother and then just how much love Zeke and protection he has over him. I'm just like, yep it's worth it yes <laughs> I like I do the matching outfits and Zeke actually he's always like when we buy outfits and stuff and like for him or if we go to the store and he's like are you like where's Ezra <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh he actually does like the matching outfits and stuff for now so once he does decides he doesn't then you know we'll have to figure out something else but it's just funny because yeah he's starting to be like no like he doesn't get to do everything I get to do and I'm like yeah you're right like 
<laughs> that's fair that's fair yeah it's hard and then he just I think he took the role of big brother on so well like he was a lot more like mature and good about it than I thought he would have been so I was very thankful with that you know he had his moments where he definitely was showing out because he was jealous and mm-hmm. you know felt like left out yeah uh, when Ezra was really little but now they're just terrorizing me together <laughs> When people say, because I have just the one and people say, like, are you going to have another kid? And I was like, well, they, I need another because they need to be friends. And then you say this and I'm like, well, (laughs) so I would love to speak a little bit on your pregnancy a little bit. Cause I know with Ezra, he was a pandemic baby, right? Yes, he was July, 2020. He was born. Oh my. Yeah. So it was like peak. (laughs) So part of honestly, the reasons why I'm like never doing this again is because of some PTSD from um, that pregnancy. And I want to say not even the pregnancy, I would just say probably just delivery and beyond because that's when I had the health scare. But yeah, having my pregnancy, I always dealt with hypotension. So I had very, very low blood pressure. In fact, I would stand up and almost faint because Mm -hmm. my blood pressure would just drop super low. So that was kind of my issue. And then I also had iron deficiency. So I had to take supplemental iron. But um, for the most part, it actually was pretty textbook. You know, I would get, you know, the morning sickness and blah, blah, blah. But for the most part, it was pretty straightforward. Middle of the pandemic, I get a positive COVID diagnosis. And the reason I even went into the ER was because I was having a very hard time breathing and chest pain. And my husband was like, like, we need to go, you know, you're pregnant. We can't just like, cause if I had it my way, I'd be like, no, I'll be okay. <laughs> Again, why he's like my person. So we go into the ER, they're doing all these tests and then, you know, they do a COVID test obviously. And I'm positive. Luckily or unfortunately, there's nothing they can really do just because when you're pregnant, you're so limited to what you can take and interventions that they can do. And so, you know, they're like, you know, watch everything closely, but you know, you kind of just have to go home and quarantine. So Zeke stays at my in-laws house for the next 10 days, which was like probably the hardest part (laughs) of like the whole thing. He was confused. We were FaceTiming and he's like, can I come home? And we're like, no, like mommy's sick. Ugh, it was, it was hard. That was probably like the hardest part of the whole, but luckily, you know, we re- recover as far as I thought, you know, and then he comes home 40 weeks now, 40 weeks and actually two days is when I go into labor with Ezra. So I'm laboring at home as long as possible. And cause I hate going and then like being sent back. <laughs> That's the worst feeling. I get there and they're like, oh no, like this baby's coming and stuff. Like you should be ready ready to go. So I'm excited. My husband and I are there. And that at that time, that was the, the rule, just the one support person. Um, So obviously my spouse. So I had him there with me and we're still at this time, like at a weird time where the, the hospitals were trying to figure out all of their policies with COVID. And so I guess that morning, cause my sister had worked, was working upstairs on the COVID unit at the time. And she, and she was like, Hey, like, I guess, you know, all the expectant mothers right now, they are going to be checking everyone for COVID like that's gonna be the new thing and I was like well that makes sense you know but I came in I told them like I I was positive three weeks prior and so they're like okay so like you should probably be good but we're gonna go ahead and test you anyway well the thing with COVID is you can test positive for months I guess like there's some people that test positive for a really long time or you know weeks even months there are some people testing positive and so I was like well, you know, but that was kind of rare. So I'm like, I'm sure I'm fine. Like I've already had COVID and I want this baby out. <laughs> yeah. I luckily, and I say luckily because I don't know how I, I would have done it otherwise, had a pretty quick delivery with Ezra. Push him out. Everything's gravy. It's about 10 minutes after he is delivered. I got my test results back and they were still reading positive. And at that time, if you're positive, you can't have anybody. And, and then not only that, they were suggesting that you like separate with your baby, which I very adamantly and quickly (laughs) was like, nope, give me whatever I need to sign. You're not taking my baby away from me. My husband did have to leave and I had to spend my first night at the hospital with my brand new baby by myself, you know, and then, you know, after having a baby, you feel like you were just run over by it. Then it just everything became very isolating because literally 
they had to go into full isolation when they came into my room, the gowns, gloves, the mask, everything. I felt just so like that moment that was like so beautiful was just ripped away from me. Like, and having a baby in a pandemic already is hard, but being COVID positive and not having your support person, you know, and being honest, being a black woman, there's higher risks when you're a black woman and you're giving birth to a lot of things. Unfortunately, I was scared and I felt so alone and just, I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> like this. You know what I mean? And my husband was like, he was trying to be strong for me, but you could tell he was just like heartbroken. Like, and he was like, I've already been here. Like at this point, you know, we quarantined together. Like, and they're just like, I'm sorry. Like that's the rule as of right now. So you have to go. And that was probably like the hardest and lowest part of my pregnancy because and delivery because I felt so alone and isolated. It just I understood fully that the hospital was kind of out of their hands. This was what they were, you know, instructed to do. But it just felt so like not dehumanizing, but just like wrong. Because I I also thought of the of the loved ones that once they got COVID and they went to the hospital and they didn't come out, they had to die alone. And it was hard. But then, you know, the story doesn't end there, of course, because you know, I apparently am one of God's strong soldiers, right? <laughs> so he's like, you know what, let's, so we come home and finally, and I was, I was like, I need to be at discharge like tomorrow. <laughs> like I was like, get me out of here because I need my family. So we get discharged. And I think, you know, at the beginning of the story, I told you I had hypotension. So just keep that in mind. So really low blood pressure. And so I come home and you know, try to figure out breastfeeding, all this fun stuff that comes, you know, a couple days after <laughs> having a baby. And I started having this chest pain again. And I'm like, you know, last thing I'm trying to do is go to the hospital. So I really was trying to be strong, but it was one of those things where I was like, I was kind of scared, like worried truly because it was painful and it was hard to breathe. And I'm like, I've already had COVID. Like what could be going on? Uh, my husband being, you know, the awesome guy that he is was like, well, like, let's just check your blood pressure and just see like what's going on. If you have any weird symptoms or anything, just check your vitals. He checks my vitals and it's like 170 over 90 something. And normals is like 120 over 80. And my blood pressures, mind you, have been low. So like 80s over like 50s. And I'm like, that can't be right. So he tries it on his and it's normal. It's like 120 over 80. I'm like, okay, okay, try me again. And then it's even higher. It's like going higher. And I'm like, what is going on here? Like, I was really concerned. So we tried again and it just keeps going higher. And we don't know why, but my blood pressure is through the roof. And now I'm panicking that I'm going to broke out here. Just <laughs> like I have a three-day-old baby mm. and three-year-old, or I, he was still two at the time and a two-year-old. And I just was like, and he's like, I'm going to call 911 because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> so I'm like, Lord, he calls 911 and the ambulance comes and, you know, I'm not like laying on the ground. So they're not panicking and I'm, you know, I'm able to talk to them and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I am three days postpartum, like this kind of, you know, I did have COVID, you know, three weeks ago, et cetera, et cetera. I try to explain and they're like, okay, well, you know, we're just going to check your vitals. Like, can you walk out? So like they put me on the little stretcher and they were like, we're just going to check your vitals and just make sure everything's okay. No one was super concerned. So I was like, all right, whatever. <laughs> my husband's like, they're, they told my husband, like, we'll let you know if we, if we need to take her, take her in or anything. Okay. But she should be fine. They weren't concerned at all. So I was like, okay, sweet. So my husband's kind of like standing at the door with Ezra, like waiting to hear anything. And then like the guy shook my blood pressure. It's like off the charts, you know, <laughs> going up and up. And he's like, yeah, we have to take you in. <laughs> and they didn't even tell my husband because they were like concerned because it just kept going up. There's a lot that could happen with a really high blood pressure, but yeah, a stroke or something was very imminent. And so they put me up and strapped me in and I was in the ambulance going to the house. And I was like, this is the last place I want to. But my husband was not told anything. That was their bad. They should have. But he was panicking yeah. then. Called his mom and he's like, I don't know what's going on. Like the ambulance just took her away. And, you know, he's there with the, this new baby and was sleeping. It was just was such a time where like I, and I still like have this picture. It's like crystal clear of like my husband's sil silhouette because it was nighttime, but there was light inside our house. Just his silhouette, like holding and he was kind of cons trying to console the baby. And I was thinking like, this was the last time I'm going to see them. Like right now I can like say this mm -hmm. without crying, but it, 
like every time I think about that moment was like, I really thought I was going to go to the hospital and not come back. Um, it was, yeah, quite traumatizing. Anyway, I get to the hospital, the ER docs, they're hook me up stuff everything is just kind of a blur at this point because I'm like I don't know what's going on but then yeah the doctor comes in they're running tests they're taking blood they're hooking me up to IVs they're trying to get my blood pressure down they're giving blood pressure medication it's not really helping and the doctor is like have you heard of postpartum preeclampsia and I was like no like is that a thing <laughs> of course I could get this thing that I've never heard of and that's why like I think I've advocated so much after my experience because once they told me what it was I looked into it and I was realized how deadly it is and how because once you have the baby you usually think the worst is over right mm -hmm. who knows you can develop this thing after you've delivered and that's why it's called postpartum preeclampsia and I was like what? Like, no, I've never. And he said, yes, we can see that, you know, you're, while you were pregnant, you dealt with low blood pressure. So you probably weren't expecting something like this, but mm -hmm. that is what's happening. And so we are going to admit you to try to treat you and try to get these blood pressures down because it's very dangerous. And he kept reiterating that I'm really glad that you called the ambulance because this is a very, like very serious. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that it's a thing and we'll end up passing away and so that was like oh my God. <laughs> I was like for real like come on uh, so I get admitted to the it's called the tele unit where they monitor like your heart and everything too because I still was having the chest pain and I think it probably was just because my blood pressure was through the roof but they just wanted to monitor I was had a magnesium drip for 24 hours it had to be going which the magnesium if you've ever had a 24-hour drip which I guess you wouldn't need to unless you're in this kind of situation mm -hmm. it like makes you really like feel like you're drunk <laughs> so I'm sitting there like feeling just kind of like I'm wasted and I'm like trying to pump because my supply is just starting to come in mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about my baby and I'm like I want to have <laughs> for him and I don't want to you know like it's just such a bad time to have all this stuff going on anyway but my husband like he definitely went there with his thoughts of like he thought because also he was trying to call the hospital call the ER and be like is there any information you can give me you know with HIPAA laws and a lot of things like they they can't really give any information until I was able to talk, talk to him he really thought I think like she died like honestly and I'm like that is so terrifying that he had to like go there but he was just like and he's you know pretty strong strong guy but like he you know like called his mom and you know just broke down and was like I I don't know what to do and luckily finally I was able to get in contact with him and let him know like I'm gonna be okay but I'm gonna have to be in the hospital for a while um until they could get my blood pressure down and under control I don't even remember how long I stayed that time like it was everything's like such a blur yeah <laughs> I was discharged and then was able to go home but Elmer did have to like give Ezra some formula because I hadn't like really started pumping at that time you know um so I had nothing really stored for him and it was just it was just stressful but I definitely came home from that experience and I completely built up a wall of defense and that postpartum depression hit me hard because I was, I think it was from postpartum depression and PTSD, like near death experiences many times. <laughs> and like, I was like, I was so scared to not be there for my children and specifically Ezra. Like, I was like, I just had him. Like, I didn't feel like, I felt like I had to protect him from the world and we're mid COVID pandemic. So people wanted to come see him and stuff, but it was, you know, people were trying to be more cautious and stuff, but I really was like, nobody is coming here. I'm not going anywhere. I was like, it was, yeah, it was bad because I, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was like a defense mechanism for me, but I was very much like isolated myself and it got really, really depressing <laughs> for sure. Eventually, you know, um, was able to, you know, I saw my doctor and we talked about different options and everything, but I was able to kind of lift that cloud. But for a long time thereafter, I was just like not in a great space. And funny enough, like being on social media at the time, I wasn't doing it like full time work, but I still had to kind of put on this like facade or like take these pictures. Where I was like, okay, like, you know, I'm a new mom and I should be happy. <laughs> and I was not. And I was going through it. When I look back at those pictures, I can like 
I can see it because I know, like, like in my eyes that I was like really trying to like bake it, you know? And so it's kind of interesting just that, that side of it. But yeah, that was my wow. <laughs> love, but I'm here. <laughs> you are so powerful. You are yeah. so magnificent. You are literally a goddess in that story. Like you are so strong. You know, it's, it's one of those things where like at the moment, at the time I felt very weak and just to the point where like, I can't get back up, but I knew I had to, you know, I had this brand new baby. I had my family, if nothing else, you know, I had to be there for them. It's one of those things. Yeah. That you just, when you're in it, you realize, I guess, how strong you can be. It's like mind blowing. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you went through it and you made it to the other side. Yeah. Thankfully I did. And I'm doing, I'm doing really well now. Blood pressures have leveled out. They didn't get back to like my normal, which was, so they're so a little bit higher. And that is the, a risk I run if I ever did want to have another baby of that happening again. But you know, I'm a lot, a lot better than where I was. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You are a yeah. fighter and you telling that story. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it, you know, it was hard at first. In fact, I the first time I did reshare it, I realized how like therapeutic it was and good for me to because I really didn't talk about it for a long time. So I was like, I could have not been here, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, and that real like that reality, especially with 2020, you know, everything else that was going on with mm-hmm. the world felt like it was on fire. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. Like, and I, I understood how, you know, it was difficult with, you know, a lot of people lost their lives. So I think just taking that with a grain of salt and being turning it to being thankful, you know, that I did make it out. And I think that's kind of where I found a lot of my strength. But but for a while there, like I said, I was, I didn't talk to talk about it until I did. And I realized like, oh, you know, it's a good story to share. And it actually helped with the healing that I didn't realize I still need, you know, until you like tell the story. Yeah. Yeah. And your story is going to help somebody <laughs> else because I don't know much about preeclampsia. Yeah. yeah. I didn't either. <laughs> oh. Is there signs for women who are postpartum to look for? My whole thing is that I think every woman who is pregnant should have a blood pressure cuff at home and should be educated about this because there's so much pre-pregnancy care and during pregnancy care Mm -hmm. that like you get and you have an appointment every couple Mm of weeks. You know what I mean? And then you have one like after Mm -hmm. like postpartum care, especially in the U.S. could be so much more and should be so much more because apparently there's a lot that can happen after and even just not even the physical part but you know the mental and emotional part is rough you know and so I'm just advocating for more postpartum care for women and also just yeah the education about all the all the possibilities not to necessarily frighten people but to be aware yes I think, you know, had I known that was a thing and I'm like, oh, they talked about this happening, you know, the high blood pressure is happening. Like I can immediately be like, rule that out and be like, okay, call the, do the steps that I need to do. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Kudos to your husband. Yes. I didn't even think to check my blood pressure. Right. Because I was like, it's been low the whole time. Like, you know, if anything, it's going to be normal now, (laughs) but no, it was skyrocketing. And that was my body body telling me like something is very wrong so when women like what I want to say to the mom that is listening to this like if you feel off from what I'm hearing your stories like if you feel off we're so like us women we want to be so strong we want to be so strong for our families and we want to be we want to seem like we're just tough and we can handle it all and I think taking that pause and being like there is something wrong and asking for help right yeah absolutely because like you said I feel like even for me and I think just coming out of the hospital I didn't want it to be a burden again I know it was already kind of a stressful situation with the COVID birth but no you have to listen to yourself and listen to your intuition and your gut because I knew something was wrong I didn't necessarily want to make a big deal about it but luckily my husband did (laughs) um, I'm glad he made a big deal about it because I could have like not made it you know Mm -hmm. so I am so thankful you're here and I am so thankful for your story, like for you sharing that with us. Thank you. Yeah. The whole time you were speaking, I was just getting goosebumps. Like, wow. Like you lived through something that was so, like you said, traumatic. Did you reach out and get any sort of help, like external help for going through that aftermath? 
Yeah. When they evaluated me after my scores were like really high for like postpartum depression and stuff. And so I did seek counseling, which helped a lot. I didn't get on medication. It just wasn't necessary for me, but I, I did consider it because I was very much in a dark spot, but luckily, you know, just talking through it, it helped, helped tremendously. Get help, mamas, if you need it, yeah. please. There's so much going on uh, postpartum. And that's, like I said, why I feel like we need more support. I 100% agree with you. Like the postpartum care needs to be, it's not going to be done for us. We need to do it for ourselves. We need to ask for that help. It is so necessary. It's necessary. So open your hands, women, mamas, open them and receive that help, especially after having a baby. It's like you just created like you just created a living being like you deserve to be pampered and taken care of yeah I completely agree (laughs) yeah oh my goodness oh my gosh this conversation has been so good I'm just like this is all like I'm just eating it all up and you're just Uh, so open and so honest and I so appreciate that is there any last thing on your heart that you would like to share with our listeners be it about motherhood journey that you've been on up to now or social media, like whatever it is that's on your heart. Yeah. I would just like to say with the way that 2020 and beyond has really taught us, if it's taught me anything is to just really value your life and what you have, because unfortunately, you know, a lot of people didn't make it and just realizing what's important to you. For me, I love working, you know, in the medical field and everything. And I thought it was super important to me, but when I stepped back and reevaluated where my life is at now, that wasn't what was the most important. And so I had to do what was best for me. And so just do what's best for you, but really understand and appreciate, I guess, just what, what it is that you have, but also just live the life that you want to the most and authentically because life is short and we really don't know what tomorrow will bring. Mm, You're speaking (laughs) to my soul. I'm like, yes, if you see my head right now. (laughs) I'm like, like, yes, you're speaking to my soul. So where can the listeners of Make Life Fun go support you, celebrate you, go see those cute little babies? Mummy underscore Anique on Instagram is my main platform. For now, we are in the works of getting a YouTube channel started. Hopefully that's coming soon. But yeah, you can follow us on Instagram and just all the cute matching outfits will keep coming. (laughs) Yes, and the fun. And the the fun. fun. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here and sharing your heart with us today. Yes. Thank you for having me. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for listening to the Make Life Fun podcast. I am so filled with joy to have you here. If this show resonates with you, I have a gift for you. If you're feeling stuck, this freebie may be just what you need. I believe that if you know your why, it helps you get unstuck quicker. So to connect with your heart and know your why and figure out what it is that is most important to you, get the freebie. It's in the show notes. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast to get notifications each week. To support the show, you're invited to leave a tip in the tip jar. Information for all this is in the show notes. Sending love and light to the spirit listening to this today. Be blessed.